Hello, welcome to Us Wargamer. I'm your host, Rob, and this is going to be a full review of the Dark Oath Battle Tome Supplement, which is pretty exciting. The rules for these have dropped in my lap today, and me and the Twitch chat, as you can see here, are going to be going through these in great detail. Let me know what you think about these different units in the comments below. And of course, we're going to be dissecting these heavily on my Discord, which you can access via my Patreon. Uh, and so please do join up. We've got a good and active community talking about these changes, which is very fun. So let's go talk about the Dark Oath units. First one we're going to look at is the Dark Oath Chieftain, which is 110 points. Seven wounds with a five up save makes this unit not that survivable, but the 110 points uh, cost is very cheap. So we love that, which is pretty good. He has the classic unit profile of four attacks, threes and threes, run one damage, two. Also got a cheeky blade mask on his horse. The Haunts is going to do some damage, which I love, which does D3 damage and thanks to the death blow special rule, can potentially, if you roll a six to hit, do an additional one mortal wound for an incredibly uninspiring amount of damage, which is fine because that's not what this unit is for. This unit isn't a frontline combat character. This unit is a big buff bot, which we love. They also have the special rule death in for glory which is particularly nice for slaves to darkness because it allows you to do two heroic actions instead of one they have to be different heroic actions which is cool and you can carry out but you can carry out the her heroic leadership which is get a command point twice which is pretty nice this is going to be particularly good in the sub faction for slaves to darkness which i think is ravagers because one of their heroic actions allows you to bring back a unit that of slain cultists at half strength and it's a heroic action and now you no longer need to use that in you know don't need to use up it's, it's good it just works really well there which is we love okay and then they have the oath of the wanderer is what which makes them the buff bot this, if this unit was the first friendly unit picked to fight in your combat phase, then once this unit fulfills its oath, until the end of the battle, you add one to the wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by friendly mortal dark oath units where they're wholly within 12 inches of this unit. Pretty spicy. We absolutely love that. And that's good because that's what we call an economies of scale. Uh, and so if you have a lot of units in range, then you are going to be able to get plus one to wound on all of those guys. So we love that. Uh, so let me know what you think of the Dark Oath Chieftain. Let's go look at the next unit. The next unit we're going to talk about has got easily the best combo that we might have seen in Age of Sigmar 3. I'm trying not to hype it up too much. The Dark Oath World of Fiend is nine wounds with a five up save. And it's not too bad in combat. Three attacks that do D3 damage and then six attacks that do damage too. Nine wounds, five up save though. You're going to say, Rob, not that survivable, but they've got an amazing set of abilities for surviving. And even if it dies, don't worry. We've got some tricks and we've got some tricks of the trade for that. Let's start with the fell aura ability that's going to help with its survivability in that the unit is not visible to enemy models that are more than 12 inches away. So no shooting, no magic spells to try to get rid of this bad boy at range, which we love. The next one is the feed on flesh. This is his main ability. And what this effectively is, is when a model's slain within 12 inches, you receive points. Those points can go up to a maximum of six. If a Dark Oath model is slain within 12 inches, you get two points, but you still cap out at six. At the end of your hero phase, so at the end of your hero phase, if this unit has one or more sacrifice points, those are the points I was talking about, you can say it will bestow the Dark Blessings, and if you do so, you pick one of the following effects. I think Fellowing would be good as a, as a Wilder Fiend. Anyway, so just to recap, you get points when models within 12 inches die. If it's a Dark Oath model, you get two points up to a maximum of six. Super simple. At the end of the hero phase, choose one of these abilities. First one is the Eye of the Dark Patron. This is going to work super well with a Slaves to Darkness army. For each five plus, you pick one friendly mortal Dark Oath unit wholly within 18 inches of this unit until the end of the turn. The strike first effect applies to that unit. Don't forget that's going to work really well in conjunction with the character we just talked about. So they're going to be able to strike first, therefore uh, bestowing the plus one wound aura around them. This is really nice. We love that. That's great. Mind Shroud is you for each four plus, you pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of this unit. Until the end of the turn, the unit can issue or receive commands. Also very effective, stopping all-out defense, stopping other sorts of abilities as well, especially stopping redeploy, which is a game-changing command ability. This is great. 
really good. You're rolling six dice. You should be able to do this at least three times. Pretty nice. But if you can only do it once, also great. Warping Balefire is, for each three plus, pick one enemy within 18 inches of this unit. You can pick the same unit. You can, you can pick the same unit multiple times. They suffer a mortal wound. Models slain by this effect do not generate sacrifice points. So if you were to have a couple of Wilder Fiends, there are 170 points. I should have said that. If you were to have a couple of Wilder Fiends, you could effectively build a mortal wound shooting bunker, but it's all based on models dying. It's only in your hero phase. Is it enough of an effect? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Next one is Dark Might. For each two plus heal one wound allocated to this unit in addition for each six you can add one to this unit's wounds characteristic for the rest of the battle that's especially good that's especially good later in the game or sorry early in the game so you can build up to having this thing be more survivable which i think is great and i love that but it's the next i mean i'd like to be clear i think feed on flesh is super good but let's get into the absolutely spicy cursed origin special rule and it's going to make this meme which i'm about to show you of a Dark Oath War Queen that says this baby can fit so many Wilder Fiends inside. Make a lot of sense. Okay. Each time a friendly Dark Oath hero is slain, if any friendly Dark Oath Wilder Fiends have been slain, you can roll a dice. On a 2+, plus, pick one friendly Dark Oath Wilder Fiend that has been slain and set it up again on the battlefield, wholly within 6 inches of a touring feature and more than 9 inches from enemy territory. Uh, yes, from all the enemy units with no wounds allocated to it and with its sacrifice points set to zero. The same unit can be returned to the battlefield multiple times during the battle. Okay, so let's start talking about how we can make this make a lot of sense and make this be hilarious and also very thematic of creatures coming out of the wood. So let's just take an immediate example. Let's take, say we have uh, six Dark Oath heroes then this means every time a Dark Oath hero dies, we can put on a 2+, plus, put a Wilder Fiend on the board. That's pretty cool. That means we could get potentially a lot of Wilder Fiends on the board, which is fun, but it will require our Dark Oath characters to die. But now let's have a load of fun with it, and let's go look at the special sub-faction that you get in Slaves to Darkness called Ravagers and the heroic action that you can use. This heroic action is called Rally the Tribes, and you pick one Chaos Marauder, a Chaos Marauder Horseman, one Cultist, or one keyword Dark Oath unit in your army that has been destroyed. If you do so, a new replacement unit with half the number of models in that unit that was destroyed, rounding up, is added to your army. Important wording there is replacement versus the fact that it's the same unit. You don't return the unit, you make a replacement unit. So that's pretty fun, okay? Set up that unit wholly within 12 inches of the hero, carrying out this heroic action, more than nine inches from one enemy units. Each destroyed unit can only be replaced once. Replacement units cannot themselves be replaced. So let's try to make a little bit of a wombo combo here. Okay, first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna have a Wilder Fiend and the Wilder Fiend is gonna die. That means it's slain, which is rubbish. We're playing Ravagers and so we use our heroic action, uh, thankfully, uh, attached to our character that can do two heroic actions here. And then what we do is we bring back the slain Wilder Fiend. It's pretty fun. So that's easy peasy. Now our Dark Oath Chieftain runs in and dies. That's sad. And therefore, what we're going to do is use the Ravager's ability to bring... Oh, so we, on a 2+, plus, we add another Wilder Fiend to our army. Then we use the Ravager's ability and we bring back that slain hero, which is quite fun as well. And it can keep going with multiple heroes and multiple Wilder Fiends. In fact, I think I need to make a flowchart with cows in the future, but it's crazy, which is fun. Will it work? Probably not. Will it be hilarious? Maybe. Do they want you to buy 19 boxes of Wilder Fiends? Potentially, I don't know. Is this how it's meant to work? Also don't know. Can it? Is this how it currently will 100% work? Without, without an FAQ? Yes. And it's super fun. Also super thematic as well, because you're just bringing in Wilder Fiends and characters back from the dead and uh, just amazing stuff. Super, super fun. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed that little combo. And that's why this lady can fit so many Wilder Fiends in here, which is cool. Let's go look at the next unit. Of course, you're going to need some battle line for your Marauder army if you're not taking 800 Wilder Fiends. And the Dark Oath Marauders come in at super cheap 80 points for a unit of 10 with only one wound and a 5-up save, so they are not very survivable. Their movement 6 and their bravery 6. Their banner adds plus 1 to their bravery and their musician, who is called a Doom Beater, great name, uh, adds plus 1 to the charge rolls for the unit as well, which is pretty spicy. Now, 
If you take the Raider weapon, you've only got one inch reach, and they've got two attacks, threes and fours, no rend, damage one. And if you take the spear, it's two inch reach, and they're on 28 mil bases. So the spear might be more useful for trying to get attacks in, but you hit on one worse, you hit on fours, and you wound on fours with no rend, damage one. You can solve the rend issue by getting rend if you complete the Oath of the Marauder by making a seven plus charge. And don't forget, thanks to the Doom Beater, you get plus one to that charge as well. And then your uh, weapon, whichever one you choose is going to get plus one rend which is pretty nice also don't forget we're in the edition where you can have plus three rend thanks to hoarfrost which is pretty cool okay now don't forget also if you take the special character you can potentially be wounding on threes thanks to their oath which is pretty nice with two attacks each with plus one to hit you could be with your weapons hitting on twos wound on threes rend one damage one and with the spears it'll be threes and threes rend one damage one so that's pretty nice for what is a very cheap unit ultimately but thanks to glorious death their other special rule these guys become particularly fun because while this unit is wholly within 12 inches of any friendly dark oath heroes each time a mod in this unit is slain by an attack made with a melee weapon you pick one enemy unit within three inches of this unit and roll a dice on a five plus they take a murder they take a mortal wound or as we know it on age on, on Age wargamer a murder roll hashtag murder roll now this is particularly good as i talked about already with the ravagers commandability because if i was to take a 30 brick of these Dark Oath Marauders, and they are quite cheap. That's only going to run me 240 points. I can send them in, do a bunch of attacks. Thanks to the Wilder Fiend, I'm going to be able to potentially give them Strike First, which is quite nice. Um, so these guys are going to Strike First. They're going to have plus one to hit, plus one to wound, Rend one. And then you're going to be able to just murder some stuff. And then when you finally get hit back, because you have 30, statistically you should be doing 10 mortal wounds back. Now, thanks to the Ravager's uh, heroic action, I can bring 15 back from the dead. And then I can send them in again. And they are super, super, super cheap, which is great. Great unit, great synergy. The models are cool. All of these rules are only going to last for three months, so don't forget that. Um, but very fun. Also, just being pointed out by the chat, just throw Archeon in as well for a fight on death command ability as well, which is also really nice. Mortal wounds when you die, fight on death, power up the Wilder Fiends by dying, which is super fun, and then do some blamos with those. Everyone's having a great time. The last unit is also very good. There are 125 points. We're doing five points again. I know a lot of you were like, I thought we were done with five points, Rob. No, we're back. We're back at five points. 125 points for the Dark Oath Fell Riders. They move 12 inches, so they're fast. They've got two wounds each, and they've got a five-up save. So that's 10 wounds for 125 points, or 20 wounds for only 250 points is a very competitive price point. But... They are low bravery and a low armor save, so something to be conscious of. Okay, now they've either got to be equipped with the Marauder Javelins, or they can be equipped with the Broadsword, and you get some kind of different advantages for either one. The Marauder Javelin, which I forgot to point out, has ranged 12 inches with one attack, but they hit on a 4, and their damage D3. I really kind of skipped over this when I was talking it with the Twitch chat, but for 250 points, I could do... 10 shots that are damage D3, which feels quite good. Quite good, if I'm honest. Uh, however, if you decide not to have the Marauder Javelin, which then in combat has got two attacks, fours, fours, rend one, damage one. Uh, and then uh, if you decide not to go for that, you could go into combat and have the Broadsword, which is three attacks, to hit on a three, wound on a four, rend one, damage one. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself, rend one on just quite a cheap cavalry unit is pretty good. Well... Get ready, because if you fulfill the Oath of the Raider, which is if this unit finishes a charge move within half an inch of an enemy unit, that unit is more than three inches from any other units in your army, and it fulfills its Oath. Once its Oath is fulfilled, then until the end of the battle, the rend characteristic of the unit's Marauders, Javelins, and Broadswords are two instead of one, which is pretty good. And I think that means the Ren 2 will apply also in shooting as well. So that means you're going to have a bunch of shooting attacks, which are Rend 2, which is pretty nice. Damage D3. Nice. Don't forget, also, you can get plus one to wound on these melee attacks uh, with thanks to the Chieftain that we looked at earlier, which is also 
very nice. Uh, now, if you've got a champion, they're going to get plus one attack. The You get attacks also from the trampling hooves as well. For quite a lot of attacks that you can stack on just a single model, you're looking at five attacks just from a single Dark Othel Rider alone, which is crazy. Five attacks. So you're going to be getting 25 attacks total um, from... Uh, the unit of five for 125 points, which is pretty nice. Standard Bearer adds plus one to the bravery. The musician is called a horn blower, not as cool as the uh, the other fella. Uh, and then you add plus one to your charge rolls, which is pretty nice. And then they have the special rule swift attackers, which is also fun, which is minus one to be shot at uh, from missile weapons. And then if they charge into a unit that does unleash hell, unleash hell is only going to hit them on sixes. So this is very good this is a great unit that could potentially do a quite a lot of damage for an incredibly cheap price don't forget of course that in the ravagers um sub faction you're gonna be able to bring models of these back as well so you might want to get a lot of fell riders uh, because they're very cheap you can easily have two units of 10 that's only going to set you about 500 points that would equate to 20 shots that do d3 damage which is quite a lot to be honest uh which i mean i know it's fours and fours but it's still pretty fun uh, and then yeah you've got a pretty good combat profile as well and they're fast which is great and that's it so far. Don't forget there is still more information to come out in the Dawnbringers books in the future. But that's everything that, that's all the rules that are going to be encompassed in the uh, FOMO box that they're releasing or the Dark Oath box, which features 20 Marauders, 5 Cavalry, the Wilder Fiend, and also our special mounted character. Honestly, pretty fun. i got to say, end of the edition feels like they've really ramped up the energy of these units. But considering that they've said that they're 125 points, feels like it was written at a time when they were doing five-point increments, which is about a year and a half ago, which is kind of interesting. So very, very powerful units. Great combination. Infinite Wildebeest could be an incredible meme build. But all of that is only going to last until the start of the next edition. So please do... Even though I might have hyped you up in the video, please do make sure you buy responsibly. Don't have loads of regret when the new edition comes around, because I'd hate that to be something that happened. Uh, so please don't. Anyway, sounds cool. Minis are great. Rules are great. Sounds cool. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.